Hi everyone and you're very welcome to this year's exam revision junior cycle science predictions for 2025. Now before we get into my predictions for the exam for this year I just want to give a quick overview of the layout of the exam and what you can kind of expect when you get into the exam in June. So there's two sections in the junior cycle science paper there's a section A which is short answer questions and section B which is the long answer questions. Every single year in the short answer section there are 10 questions you're required to answer all questions here with each question carrying 50 marks, 15 marks, for a total of 150 marks. Now, section B, a little bit different. The number of questions that are in section B varies from year to year. It can be anywhere so far between five and seven questions, but the marks are always either going to be 30 marks or 45 marks. So, for example, the 2024 exam that had the longest number of uh, long answer questions we've ever had, there was seven long questions there. Each of them that year were 30 marks. If there's any less than seven, then there's going to be a combination of 30 and 45 mark questions. But the total marks is always going to be 210 marks, which is about 58%, um, which is going to be accounted for with your long answers. So the entire mark uh, available for the full paper is 360 marks. Now, the junior cycle science exam is broken down, as we know, into four main strands, earth and space, chemical world, physical world and biological world. And then we also have the nature of science, which interweaves between all of those. Now, the vast majority of your questions are going to come from those four, the earth and space, the chemical world, the physical world and the biological world. But you can be asked bits and pieces of the nature of science as well. So, for example, do you know what a hypothesis is? Uh, do you know what a testable hypothesis is? Are you able to graph data and so on? Now, all of the information in that, um, I suppose the learning outcomes can be quite vague. So if we just have a look there at Biological World 1, for example, in the top right hand corner, all it says for you to know is students should be able to investigate the structures of animal and plant cells and relate them to their functions. Now that looks quite short, but in reality, when you're covering that in class with your teacher, there is an awful lot of information that you have to cover as part of that. You need to be able to draw uh, both plant and animal cells. You need to be able to label both the plant and animal cells. You need to know all of the structures within both. You need to know their functions within both. And the microscope comes into that. So there is a great deal of information inside each of those learning outcomes. So to make it a little bit easier, I've developed this document here, which takes each of those learning outcomes that's on the, the syllabi, and it's broken down into the things that you need to know. So for example, if we look at the one there in the middle, the ES4 one, it says develop and use a model of the Earth, Sun and Moon system to describe the predictable phenomena observable on Earth, including seasons, lunar phases and eclipses of the Sun. Now, what does that actually mean for you as the student? Well, you need to know exactly what is a season. So you need to have a definition for a season. You need to explain and illustrate how the Earth's tilt affects the seasons and draw a relevant diagram to outline the seasons in the northern and southern hemisphere. I've provided a diagram there which you could use. Do you know the phases of the moon and are you able to define relevant terms such as waxing, waning, gibbous, crescent and new moon? And then do you know the difference between solar and lunar eclipses and are you able to draw relevant diagrams associated with those as well? So each of those learning outcomes, there is a great deal of information within each one of them and I've broken that down for you. Now, if you want to get access to the document, I've created a scannable QR code there. So all you have to do is pause the video, take out your phone, iPad, whatever it might be, scan that QR code and that will bring you uh, directly to the document. You'll be able to download that document then, print it out or save it on your phone, save it on your iPad, whatever it might be. And you can use that to aid your study um, over the next couple of weeks before your final exam. Now, I suppose a couple of tips for the exam when you get to it in June as well. Section A, as we know, is the short answer questions. I would recommend spending approximately 50 minutes on the short questions. Again, you have to answer all of the questions, so please don't leave any blanks here. A lot of the time, some of these questions will be true false questions. They might be tick the box or you might be given a diagram or four sets of diagrams and it might be A, B, C, D. And they'll ask you which of the diagrams. Please don't leave questions like that blank. OK, it's going to be one of the answers um, that's on the page. So if in doubt, guess. You need to know your definitions. So the document I previously shared with you will be really helpful with that. Um, make a list of all the definitions you need to know, sit down, learn them off before the exam, and you should be able to get them onto paper as quick as you can on the day of the exam. Before you take in to answer any questions, I would recommend that you read through all the questions first and put a question mark or an X beside the questions you're a little bit of unsure of and come back to these then at the end. And as I said, if you're in doubt, guess. OK, at this point, you need to be practicing and practicing and practicing as many of these exam paper questions as you can. There's only been a couple of years of paper so far. 
but already we're seeing that questions are very, very repetitive. So things like the cell, things like measurement, things like circuits, human reproduction, the celestial objects, they're kind of the more common short answer questions. And they usually come up either every year or every second year. So start to see the trends that are present there and making sure you're getting as, as much exposure as possible to those questions before you get into the exam. Now, section B, we have our long questions here. About 50 minutes for section A, so it leaves about 70 minutes or an hour and 10 minutes then for our section B questions. Read through each question carefully before you decide which order you're going to go in. Maybe start with the ones that you're most confident with and then switch over to the ones that you're not so confident in. Again, there's no choice, so you do have to answer all questions, so please don't leave any of the questions blank and attempt absolutely everything. Make sure you're including enough points for full marks. Um, so if it asks you for uh, an explanation of a question, a one-word answer is not going to suffice. Usually for junior cycle science, it's always going to be marked in multiples of three. Okay, So if you're looking at a long question and you can see that there's a part A, a part B, a part C, a part D, and a part E, and that's it, we're probably looking right there's five parts there we can see it's a 30 mark question each part is going to be worth approximately six marks there 30 divided by five so to get full marks we'll probably need to give two points for each one so just keep the number three in your head and always try and make sure you're given enough information to get the full marks read the question carefully this is the part where students mostly fall down some questions might have two parts in one so it might say which of the above diagrams is showing an exothermic reaction? Explain your answer. So a lot of the time students will look at the diagram and they'll say, oh, it's diagram one or diagram two, but then they will forget to do the explanation or the backing up of their answer part. OK, so just be very, very careful of those questions. Are they asking you more than one thing in the question? And as for the short questions, it's practice, practice, practice. Get as much exposure and as, as much practice as possible with the exam papers and the marking schemes over the next couple of weeks. Now, some general tips for the exam. This will apply to both sections. Just make sure and relax when you're in the exam. I know it's easier said than done, but all of the questions have to be based on something that you've covered in class in some way, shape or form. OK, you're not going to be asked something that you've never seen before. It's just going to be phrased slightly different. OK, there is an infinite number of ways that they can ask these questions, but they're asking these questions on a finite amount of information. OK, every teacher and every student in the country is covering the exact same material. You're not allowed to be asked anything outside of that. So if you're in the exam and you're a little bit unsure of a question, you're like, OK, I know it's based on something to do with uh, ecology. Well, start to think, what did you cover in class based on ecology and how can you apply that to the question that you're being asked? Read the question carefully. Is the question asking you to state or list or explain something? The difference in the question word will dictate how much you're expected to write. So if we have a look there in the top right hand side, it says name a force or identify a structure. They're probably going to be one or two word answers. But if we switch down there to describe one way a fox is adapted to help it survive in its habitat, that's going to be a more detailed answer. OK, so be very, very careful of what the question word is. Use a diagram if you can, a picture paints a thousand words and that can really help with your explanations and some answers. In terms of timing, if you get stuck on a question, just move on. The time that you're spending agonizing over one part of a question that you can't do is taking away time from questions further on, which you probably do know and are going to be able to pick up marks on. And as I said before, exam papers right now should be your main focus. You would probably have them. So start working your way through all of the short questions, all of the long questions. Do them as many times as you can so that you're able to get to a position where you can answer the questions without looking at your notes or without looking at your marking schemes. And again, you can use the marking scheme to, to check how you're getting on. Now, what everybody is here for is the prediction or the probable questions for June 2025. And I just want to preface this by saying there is no way to be absolutely certain as to which questions are going to come up. But I suppose there are a particular uh, couple of trends or patterns that we are seeing in the questions from year on year. And that's, I suppose, what's informing uh, these topics that are there. So usually uh, question one and question two on the junior cycle science paper, the cell normally would pop up there or there might be a measurement question there where it gives you a couple of pictures of uh, apparatus, which you would have used over your three years of junior cycle science. And you'll have to give the name and the unit or what it's actually measuring. Now, both of those questions were actually absent from the paper in 2024. So I would be thinking they're likely to make an appearance again in 2025 and they'd be a lovely first two questions to have. They're very, very repetitive. Celestial objects is usually a question that's there pretty much every year or every second year at the very least. So a couple of different ways that that could come up. 
Um, I suppose the favorite question that they would have is they normally would give you like a reading comprehension style question and they will have a number of blanks in it and the blanks will be the names of the celestial objects like planets, dwarf planets, comets, asteroids, galaxies and so on. Um, and you have to put them then in the correct place. So just make sure you use the document that I've shared with you, look at the list of celestial objects that we have and make sure you know what each one of those are. States of Matter is another one of those questions that's there pretty much every year or every second year. It was absent last uh, last summer in the exam, so I'd be expecting that to make a reappearance this year. So are you able to draw a particle arrangement of a solid, a liquid, a gas? Do you know the names of the processes moving from a solid to a liquid to a gas? So for example, to get from a solid to a liquid, we're melting. To get from a liquid to a gas, it's evaporation and so on. And then another very popular question that comes up is the idea of acids and bases. So maybe you're given a pH scale and asked to read it, know that the lower numbers are the acidic substances, the higher numbers are the basic substances. Um, for example, what uh, indicators would you have used? What process or what um, steps did you follow to measure the pH of a substance in class? So they'd be the kind of things I would be expecting uh, for June 2025. Now your long answer questions, again, couple of trends in these from year to year. A lot of these might not have appeared in June 2024, which is why I've put them in here. So things like our seasons and our lunar phases. This is a question that the examiner seems to absolutely love. It's there again pretty much every year or every second year. So are you able to draw the arrangement of the sun compared to where the earth is for the different seasons like spring, summer, autumn and winter? Um, the tilt, making sure we're including the tilt of the Earth's axis there as well to account for the difference in temperatures and seasons in the northern and southern hemisphere. And then our lunar phases there as well. So are you able to maybe if you're given a blank circle for the moon, are you able to shade it in what a thing like a waxing gibbous moon would look like, what a waning crescent moon would look like and so on. So making sure we're going back over those. Now, as part of your studies, you also need to prepare a common gas in the lab. So some teachers will do them all. Some teachers might only do one. You'll be given the choice usually as to which one uh, you answer about on the exam. So what did you do to produce carbon dioxide gas in the lab? What did you do to produce oxygen gas in the lab? So what chemicals did you use? And then what did you do to show that you actually had produced the gas? So for example, if you've done the carbon dioxide experiment, if you get a lit match and put it into the collecting jar where your carbon dioxide was, it will extinguish the match. Whereas for the oxygen gas, um, if you had a glowing splint, so for example, if you could imagine you had a match and it didn't fully go out, it was still slightly glowing, you put that in the collecting jar where the oxygen gas was, it will relight. So knowing the test for both of those gases as well and drawing suitable diagrams to show what you did. Our circulatory system, so our heart and our blood flow didn't appear in 2024, but did appear in 2023. So making sure you could label a diagram of a heart if it was given, given differences there between arteries and veins, and then being able to write a paragraph about the blood flow in the heart. So what blood vessels did the blood enter the heart in? We first go into the atria, we have contraction and we have relaxation and relaxation of the ventricles and the atria. We move from the atria down to the ventricles and go up to the lungs and so on. Knowing which uh, side of the heart deals with oxygenated blood, knowing which side of the heart deals with deoxygenated blood. So making sure we know the detail involved with that. Photosynthesis, so the process by which green plants make their own food, glucose being the food source. Do we know the chemical equation for photosynthesis? Okay, do we know the products of photosynthesis? So make sure and go back over that. And then a big one, which they always seem to, to ask either in a short question or a long question is the idea of circuits. So if you were given um, particular equipment, do you know the circuit symbols associated with that? Can you draw a circuit? Are you able to calculate voltage? Are you able to calculate current? And are you able to calculate resistance? Are you able to go one step further and calculate electrical power? OK, so everything you need to know about all of those topics will be in the document I shared previously uh, with you. So maybe take a screenshot of the probable questions for both the short questions and the long questions. Go back to the QR code, which I've shared with you, and just making sure that you're sitting down and ticking through each of the individual points that you need to know on all of these topics. But they will be my probable questions um, for June. And that's what I would be sharing with my students to have, I suppose, you need to know everything but I would definitely know these ones in, in great detail because they would be the ones I would be expecting uh, to be there on the paper. Now, if you're struggling a little bit with the content um, and you need a little bit of a hand, we do have lots of resources there to help you, okay, on our exam revision website. So we have our complete revision package. By watching this video, you have just got yourself 10% off the package, um, which you can use over the next couple of weeks. So we have hundreds of bite-sized video tutorials that's gonna make learning easier for you. 
not only do we have video tutorials, we have PowerPoint presentations, we have a resource pack, we have quizzes, and we have a full set of all the exam questions which have ever been asked for most of the junior cycle subjects as well. Now, as I said, what are you actually getting here? Well, you're getting your bite-sized video tutorial grinds. Videos are usually between maybe six and 10 minutes, so really, really easy to sit down and get through a huge amount of material in the space of an hour or so. You'll have PowerPoint presentations, you will have distinction standard notes, which you will be able to download and print off and use to help you with your exam papers and your study. We have a whole host of exam and mock paper questions. All the marking schemes will be provided. We have a set of self-correcting quizzes. So each time you study the topic, you can go in, try one of the quizzes and see how you're getting on. And it's not just science, which we have on the platform. We have a huge number of junior cycle subjects available. We've got Irish, we've English, we've maths, we've history, we've geography, we've business and we've home economics. And from September 2025, we'll have French, Spanish and religion joining as well. Now, if you are studying a subject that isn't on either of those lists there, not to worry, we might not have video tutorials and we might not have quizzes based on them, but we will have all of the past exam papers and marking schemes uploaded. So for example, if you're studying German maybe as a language, yes, it's not on our list here of uh, full subjects uploaded to the platform, but you can still log on, add German as a subject, and you will get access to all of the past exam papers and marking schemes. And just before we finish up, here are a couple of the student reviews. So these are people who have used the platform um, to help them with their study for both their junior cycle and their leaving cert exams. I'm not going to read through them, but you can have a pause and just have a read through how much it did help them in their preparation for their exams. And as I said, because you have watched this video today, you do get 10% off of our platform. So if you use the code 2025 tips at checkout, that will give you 10% off. So last thing to say is just the best of luck with your preparation for your exams over the next couple of weeks. Keep an eye on our YouTube channel and our social media platforms to get access to all of the other junior cycle and leaving cert prediction videos for 2025. Keep an eye on all the tips that I shared um, and the very best of luck with your preparations.